Ah, uh, you thought you were here for an episode of Tasty Time. Well, psych, today's episode is grind time. And we're gonna be comparing two different grinders that we have uh, on either end of the spectrum. This one is $4,400, this is the Malconig EK43. And we're gonna be comparing it to the new Timor C3 Max. This is uh, $130. The coffee we're gonna be brewing today is also a brand new coffee that's gonna be releasing quite soon. Uh, this is a new Ethiopia Yirgacheffe. It's the Aricha coffee. Uh, so this is a washed one. Always like to have a nice washed Ethiopia on the menu. And uh, I'm curious to see how this one tastes, especially off two different grinders. So let's get right into it. Uh, I'm gonna go through my AeroPress recipe. So that's how we're gonna brew both. Just kind of see if uh, the exact same coffee brewed in the exact same brewer with two different grinders comes out any different. We've got uh, 15 grams and that's just for a single serve AeroPress. You can see these are a nice medium roast. Well, let's start with the hand grinder. I'm gonna show you a couple of cool things about this new one. It's got this really nice, like, knurled texture. Nice to hold on to. Uh, it's got a canister opening on the bottom with uh, a grind adjustment on here. So for AeroPress, what we're gonna do is 10 clicks to the left. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Close that back up. Just feels badass too. Like it's heavy, but not too heavy. Uh, it's got this nice handle that you can extend or retract. So it packs up nice and light, really easy to use. And then you just take the top off and add your coffee. So this will hold up to 30 grams of coffee, which is plenty for two cups. It's really easy to hold and grind. I find a lot of the hand grinders don't have a nice grip for uh, for holding, so you kind of have to squeeze it between your knees, but this is quite easy to use standing up. And the burrs are quite sharp. Uh, it's easily cutting through this medium roast coffee, not even breaking a sweat. No time at all. In between, uh, you know, espresso coarseness and drip coarseness, perfect for AeroPress. Now let's, uh, I'm gonna grind the other cup of this, but we're gonna grind on the EK. We'll see how long that takes. My guess is two seconds. Feels about the same to me, but we'll see how it tastes. Mmm, these wash yoga chefs, they, uh, they always taste like, or at least they smell very lemony and very citrusy. Uh, this one has some really nice floral stuff. I always pick up like jasmine, chamomile, um, kind of nice fruity tea-like flavors. One of the more delicate coffees out there and often, for me, one of the ones that just stands out as very unique. Let's see how this one taste when we brew it in an AeroPress. So simple AeroPress recipe I like is the inverted method, where you actually brew it kind of like a French press, um, so it gets to steep a little bit longer. This is the one we did on the EK. We'll just pour the coffee right in. And then the one we're gonna do with the grinds from the C3 hand grinder, we'll do the exact same method. This is pretty nice that it just fits right in there. Cool feature I like about this, the bottom is rubberized. So it sticks, it doesn't slide around. And then the other thing I like about this grinder is it does come with a little brush so you can get rid of any of the dust that's in there. So I've got my hot water ready here. I uh, just need to prep my filters for AeroPress. My favorite way is to just place it in, add a splash of hot water. This helps the filters stick to the, the mesh a little bit better. I'm gonna brew both of these for four minutes. Uh, at four minutes, we're gonna actually flip them over and then plunge into the cup. Uh, this way, instead of the like traditional air press method, uh, you get a little bit more contact time, so you get a lot more body, um, more complete full extraction. So I prefer this method. Um, there is a risk that you will spill it, so just be careful when you do so. Uh, make sure the cap is locked on tight and that you don't over push when you're extracting your coffee. I mean, I love the air press because it's just so easy to use. It's durable, so you don't have to risk breaking it. These you can just throw in a backpack, take it camping, go for new trip, road trip, whatever you want. And again, it's just the simplest way to make a really great, tasty cup of coffee that's repeatable every single time. I just pour directly into the coffee. You're gonna stir it anyway, so don't worry too much about how you pour or agitate it. And then nice and easy, we're just gonna pop the caps on here. And again, if you wanted to get really, really detailed, you could weigh the actual water as you're filling it, uh, so you get the exact same ratio. Just have a scale ready and you can always uh, brew by weight. I find with AeroPress, your chances of messing it up are pretty low. So if you just want to rough it and freestyle it, you're likely just going to come out with a great cup of coffee. And then you'll see as well, once we finish pouring these, um, they're going to be a concentrate. So they're going to be a lot stronger than a normal coffee would be. Um, and you're probably only going to fill about like halfway up the cup. So you can top the rest up with hot water. Or if you like it, the strength of like a 
kind of a strong Americano, you can just leave it as is. But I, I want to get a taste of the subtlety of this coffee, kind of pick through the nuances and figure out how we're going to describe this coffee on the label. So I'm going to dilute it to regular drinking strength. And this is one of the benefits of uh, brewing the upside down method is you can do a longer extraction time, like four minutes. Uh, if you were brewing it the other way around, it would already be dripping out into the cup. So I guess while we're waiting for these to finish brewing, kind of describe this thing pretty well, but uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the EK43. Uh, this is the grinder you would find in all of my shops. What's really nice about it is that it grinds everything into a very uniform particle size. Um, there's very little deviation from the set particle. So if you're at number four, the majority of the grinds coming through are gonna be exactly at that setting. So there won't be as many powdery fines or large chunky boulders. The majority of that coffee is extracting at the same pace. Uh, this is a great option to have in a cafe, but maybe overkill for your kitchen counter. Great option for your kitchen counter, underkill for a cafe. All right, four minutes is up. Let's plunge these. But we'll start with the one we brewed first. Just flip it over. You'll see if you're just nice and gentle with it. And you can just slowly push. It's gonna be hot when it comes out, so there's no need to rush it. You're gonna let it cool off anyways before you drink it. And same for this one. And you'll know it's finished when you hear that air push through. So we got our two finished cups of coffee. This one has been brewed with coffee ground on the EK43. This one has been brewed with coffee ground on the C3 Max, the new hand grinder. Now it's tasty time. So they're definitely really light, um, very floral coffees. They taste as they smell. So like some citrus, some floral, some jasmine. Interestingly, I get more body off of the, uh, the grounds from this one. Just looking at them color difference wise, I'm gonna assume that maybe this was ground a little bit finer than uh, the setting we have for the EK, but they both taste really nice. This one has a little bit more clarity. I think I'm able to detect some of the nuance a little bit easier. And they're not too different. Like the, there's just a slight difference in the mouthfeel and the body, which I think is a result of the different, like the subtle difference in grind coarseness. But yeah, I get really nice like tea-like flavors, some chamomile some butterscotch. I mean, at this point, it's really hard to pick which one I like better. This one has heavier body, more of a caramel sweetness. This one has more nuance, more subtlety, longer finish. Honestly, hard to say. You could go down this rabbit hole for quite a while. But yeah, I would say that immediately, the difference I notice is like just in the clarity, like the obviousness of the flavor from the grinds from the EK43 is right up front. This one, I feel like it has to open up a little bit more, but it's pretty nice. For a $130 grinder, it makes this coffee taste great. And the acidity is really balanced. It's not out of control. Something I'm always aware of with Ethiopian coffees is that they can be a little bit on the brighter side. This is really sweet, very delicate, not sharp. Yeah, really clean tasting. Yeah, that's a really like delicate, beautiful cup of coffee. I don't know, I'll have to let you be the judge. I think uh, for 130 bucks, I'm pretty happy with the results of that, but if you got the budget for it and you want to splash, get yourself an EK43, or you can just pop into one of the stores and we'll grind it on this exact same grinder for you, however you like it. I'm stumped. I'm stuck in the middle. I think I'll buy both.